In First Steps Conversation Session 9, we talk about living joyfully. Why do we talk about living joyfully? Because so many people in the world today are unhappy. Even followers of Jesus, they just haven't found joy. And really, that's difficult for me to understand because Jesus promises us joy. It says in John 15, 11, I have told you all of this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And Jesus says that his joy should be in you so that your joy can be complete. In the world today, so many people are unhappy and we should have the joy of Jesus in our life. In fact, I believe that it's our best witness to have joy because so many people in the world haven't found it. They're overwhelmed with discouragement and despair. And when they see a believer who follows Jesus having joy in spite of the difficulties that they're going through, they begin to think maybe there's something real about Jesus. Maybe I need to talk to this person about following Jesus and the joy that is there. And that's what Jesus said. I told you all this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. On a scale of one to 10, what is your joy? Is it a 10? Is it a one? Let's think that the 10 is throne room of God experience. Let's think, think that a one is, I can't even get out of bed this morning. And where is your joy? Is it a two? Is it a four? Is it a five? But all of us, I believe, want to be more happy. We want to have more peace. We want to have more joy. So let me give you two suggestions on how you can have more joy. First of all, see the big picture. I love Romans 8, 28 when it says, and we know that God, that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. All things, all things that you experience, God is working according to his purposes. In other words, in all things, God is working for the good. I, I just am thrilled by that passage because it's the big picture. So many of us, when we go through our trials and tribulations, we get stuck on this day or tomorrow or the particular thing that happened and we lose perspective. Really, when you think about it, the difference between now and eternity is just like that. And almost instantaneously, with God, a thousand years are like a day. Almost instantaneously, we're gonna be in the presence of the Lord. And Jesus says he'll wipe all the tears away from our eyes. The second thing that you can do is not only see the big picture, but you need to determine in your mind that I'm gonna have joy in spite of this difficulty. It says in James chapter one, two through four, consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There is a determination that we need to have in our mind when we go through difficult times, that I'm gonna have joy in the midst of this. I'm, I'm gonna find joy in the midst of this. I'm gonna experience joy in the midst of this. I'm not gonna dwell on the doubt and the discouragement. I know that God is working all things together for his good, so I am gonna consider this difficulty all joy. And it's amazing when you have that attitude, how you find joy in the midst of difficult times. A few years back, I decided to have a joy list. I, in my Bible, I had a piece of paper and I decided every day I would just get up and write something that gave me joy. I did that for an entire year and I, I was amazed that every time I wrote something down that gave me joy, even in the act of, of writing, that my joy came, it just came forth. I could be discouraged, but just in the mere act of writing, my joy increased. So see the big picture and also consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. A few years back, um, I was in the Hermitage Museum in Russia. The Hermitage Mu Museum in Russia is in St. Petersburg. It's one of the world's great uh, museums. And there's a hall of tapestries. They have tapestries there. Some of them are 20, 30 yards long. Uh, beautiful. And I was walking down this hall, and I saw a tour guide who was uh, giving a group of Americans a tour of the hall of tapestries. She was speaking English, that's how, why I could hear her. And she said, look at this tapestry. She, she said, it's so intricately woven. And then she picked the thing up. And she said, look at the bottom of it. Look at the bottom of it, see all that tangled thread? And then she put it down and she said, all that tangled thread is woven together on this side, forming a beautiful picture. And I was thinking, that's the difference between the big picture and just seeing the things that are going on in your life in the moment. You know, we don't understand sometimes 
uh, the difficulties that we're going through, they're like tangled threads. But God has the perspective of eternity. And when we get up to heaven, all these tangled threads, we're gonna be able to look from heaven down on earth and we're gonna see this beautiful tapestry that he has woven out of the various trials and frustrations in our life. That's why I can say with confidence, consider all joy when you encounter various trials. And I can also say with affirmation that God is working all things together for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Mm -hmm.